ונוב, ואיזה פיץ' שהיא סטודנט עם אמנואל דלטורד, אמנואל דלטורד סטרופ. about uh, our project, um, I work with, uh, with Emmanuel Dallatore and, uh, and Adi Makmal from the engineering faculty at Bar Ilan University. I'll present our work about quantum state encoding using parameter circuit. And, and I'll also, if I, have, if I have some time at the end, I'll present uh, some of our uh, new work about uh, PQC optimization using something we call gradient tomography. Um, okay. Okay, so let's start. So first of all about a quantum state encoding. So quantum state encoding is simply the task of if we are given a quantum state, we want to, um, to find a circuit, the circuit that consists of two, of, of two qubit gates that encodes and constructs the state, the, the, the given state, up to the, the best accuracy well, that we can, we can get. And so this is called the, the quantum state encoding or state um, a, let's, let's keep it uh, like a, a entangling or something like that, or data uploading. And this is mainly useful for, um, for, um, for either for, so we are going to talk about two different versions of this problem. The first one is the most, like, most obvious when you talk about, uh, about quantum state encoding, is in which in, in this is a, a task when we're given a classical representation of the quantum state, of course, we're given either a, I don't know, either a list of amplitudes or some other, other a, a, a description of the, of the state, and we want to, to find the best circuit that encodes. This is very useful for, for a NISC algorithms such as algorithms that simulate quantum dynamics. If you want to start from a non-trivial state, um, then you have to, 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 uh, to, in to, in to initialize it somehow, so this is very useful for that, or for quantum machine learning if you want to analyze some data, some classical data, you, you want to embed this data on a quantum machine, so you have to figure out a smart way to encode it, encode it as a quantum state. The other version we're going to talk about is that I'm, I'm going to compare it to, a, to, a, to, to another version of, of this algorithm when we're given, instead of a classical representation of state, we're given n copies or uh, we are given a, a copies of the quantum state that are already, uh, already encoded on the quantum computer and we want to disentangle them to, dis to, to decode them back to zero state. So this is a very, very different, a uh, very different algorithm in its many, uh, like it, it is uses, practical uses. It can be thought of as a, qua of a quantum recompilation of quantum circuit or some some, some version of quantum state tomography because we gain some information about the code the already a uh, given quantum state, but it is uh, useful to compare them in the same framework because uh, because both of them can be done in similar similar <laughs> ways. Okay, so about classical encoding. So first of all, classical encoding, exact classical encoding, is very hard um, because we have we have a hard task. We need to encode exponential number of amplitudes. Uh, exponential in the number of qubits. So, so there, there are some methods of, to, of doing it in the, the literature, but we don't want to focus on that. We want to focus on NISC uh, algorithms, and we want to find an approximate shallow encoder. So we set, um, in, we set uh, at the beginning, we set the number of, 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 of gates, number of layers we want to use, and then we, want, we ask ourselves, given this, uh, the, the number, the, this number of layer, how, what is the best gate we should apply in order to get to the, to the, uh, to, to the target state. Uh, so this, this um, approximate version um, uh, is, is most, mostly uh, applicable when we talk about a state that has low entanglement state that can be prepared using a few number of circuits. So, a, a, so naturally, we mainly talk about, about matrix product state because matrix product state are, are a family of state that has bonded, bonded correlation, bonded entanglement between different parts of the system. So it's quite natural to try and take this tensor, the tensor network, one dimensional tensor network representation of the state and try to figure out how to transform it into a, a, into a quantum circuit. And actually, it is, it is uh, possible to do, to do in an exact manner. 
but it requires a, a, a n qubit gates with n larger than two. So you have to, to do, in the general case, if the, the bond dimension is quite large, you have to, to apply three, uh, three qubit gates or four qubit gates and so on. So uh, what do we do? How we find an approximate encoder that doesn't require uh, n qubit gates and still does the job, uh, did get the job done. Uh, so the previous method was proposed uh, by Ran. I have his uh, a, a citation probably down there, um, and it, it, it will appear shortly. And <laughs> the method is try to decode the state a uh, layer by in layer by layer approach. So uh, instead of, of uh, de decomposing the matrix product state into one uh, big circuit, you first truncate the, the state into a bond dimension of, of chi, chi equals two. And then, when you have a truncated version of the state, it's very easy to find a disentangling layer that decodes the truncated version back to the zero. So we apply this uh, disentang first disentangling layer, and then we get a, a, another version of the state which is closer to the zero state. And then what we do, we uh, repeat the post again and again. We truncate the, the, the disentangled state, which cl got closer to the zero, and then we uh, we uh, find, we truncate it again, we find the next layer, and so on and so on. And each layer brings us, bring us back to, uh, closer to the zero state. And uh, this is a very, very nice solution. The problem is that numerically, if you try to see how it converges to a better, to, to a good uh, infidelity, so infidelity equals zero is, is amazing, but you can see that a, a, a given more and more layers, <laughs> Um, there's not much improvement in the fidelity. So if we go from three, la three layers to four layers to five layers, there's also almost no improvement at all in the infidelity. And, and so it means that yes, this algorithm is very inefficient. We add it, each, la each layer does introduce some improvement, but it's not uh, using the resources correctly, and it, it uh, wastes a lot of, lot of gates that may introduce a lot of error by themselves. And so, <laughs> Uh, so where we come in, we try, we try, here is the point we, uh, we come in and try to uh, make the circuit that Rand proposed to make it better by optimization. So we take this state and we, um, we look at the fidelity or the overlap between the encoded state and the target state as our, uh, our basically our course function and we want to maximize the fidelity to get to the best overlap possible using some, some modification of the, of the gates in their existing uh, 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 structure. And so how, how, uh, so how to optimize the different gates? There are many methods. We can pick several, several directions, either by simple gradient descent. We have to make sure that the, the gates stay unitary, of course. And we picked some other method already, like um, a, a, taken from a tensor network simulations, the world of tensor network simulations. Uh, it's known as the uh, 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 Evenly Vidal, I think, uh, optimization uh, method. So we call it the element by element uh, optimization. So what we do, we take a single gate and ask ourselves if we, we um, fix all the other gates and we don't touch them. What is the best replacement of this single gate to maximize the fidelity? And if we have a tensor network, we can contract all the other tensors into one big environment tensor. And this big environment, and now the cost function or the fidelity function is basically described by a contraction of this environment tensor. Okay, this, this environment tensor with, with the gates, with the gate. And to find the optimal gate, now we have to find the best gate that gives the, the best overlap with this environment. And this can be done easily by, um, by some linear algebra, by doing some say, singular value decomposition. Uh, so this is very nice because it means that we can find the optimal solution using one step, basically, only by, only by uh, uh, using some simple linear algebra. And then after we got the best, big, best gate for for, uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, this specific gate, we can go over all the other gates and each time replacing, replacing the gates with, the, with an optimal replacement and then the optimization will, uh, uh, then hopefully it will converge uh, to, the, to the minimal, to the, to the maximal solution, maximal value of fidelity. 
And so th this, is, this is some, some uh, examples of how the convergence looks like. It's very, very smooth in our case. And you can see that the first, so this is as the infidelity as the number of iterations, you can see that the first step is actually the, the initialization provided by the previous algorithm. So after the optimization, given exactly the same number of, of, of gates, we have improved uh, by one or two order of magnitudes only by simple steps of optimization. And after, after we, we, uh, uh, we have convinced ourselves that the optimization works, um, we can compare the results of how, how this optimization behaves for different number of, of, of layers. And, and for, so, so this is the infidelity as the, as the, as the, as the, circuit, as the function of the circuit graph for different number of iterations. So, so uh, essentially the first, the first line, the first line is the previous method. And then all the other methods are just decreasing the infidelity and doing it for both for a ground state of the Eisen model and for a random MPS. Naturally, random MPS are much harder to encode because they have lots of, lots of uh, uh, disorder in them, lots of decrease of freedom. So uh, six or eight layers are not enough. So we had to continue. If we wanted to get uh, infidelity values that are closer to zero, we had to continue to maybe 16 layers. OK. Uh, after, uh, so after the optimization, we see, we, we've seen that optimization works well. Um, we have tried to demonstrate this algorithm that it works also on the quantum, on the, on the real quantum hardware. Uh, so we picked a gate, a, a picked a, we picked a circuit that, uh, that, that, um, that uh, provides a noticeable difference between the previous encoder version and the optimized encoder version. So this is our, the, our optimized uh, encoder. And we uh, simulated it on noisy simulator provided by IBM, and then on, uh, uh, did some experiments on the IMQ, and you could see, and we, we could uh, perceive a, a noticeable difference between our, of course, all the noise uh, <laughs> ruins the party, but we still got noticeable difference to, to prove that our algorithm is, is, is useful. And now for, for the second part of, uh, of the second version, let's say, and now if we're given, what happens if we're given a quantum state already, already encoded? So what we do is we fix everything, like the same algorithm exactly, except that the Intel network optimization now is performed um, on the quantum hardware itself. So we have the state already, already encoded, and we have a circuit of, a, of, a, a D, of a D layers, and we uh, optimize different gates according to, to the previous uh, <laughs> uh, method if taken from tensor networks uh, uh, optimization. And so it's the, basically it's the same thing. Now here is the tricky part, is that previously we could have obtained the environment tensor using only, by only tensor contraction. So there, there were some, some nice, nice method to do that and not to get, uh, um, and to get lost in all the, all the, tens, all the um, bond dimensions, increasing bond dimensions. But now we can't do that on quantum computers, so we have to figure out how to find this environment tensor. And actually, on, on the quantum hardware, we can do it in an alternative method instead of truncating uh, in a 10 network, network tensor, tensor network simulator. We can instead uh, apply some Pauli strings and some Pauli strings combination, Pauli string combinations, and that way to to um, to measure different parts, different components of the environment tensor and to reconstruct it uh, in our, like in, on a classical computer and then to perform, then, then to find the optimal gate. So this is, this is works, this works because the fidelity is a, a this is like the fidelity we measure on a quantum computer is, is a, is a, per, is a square root, uh, not a square root, is a, is a square of the, of the fidelity. So this is, this is a, a relatively simple, a cost function, so we can do it only by, by some basic uh, Pauli strings and Pauli string combinations, but later on we uh, generalize it to the general uh, case, for example, in VQE. Um, okay, and, and then we basically we, we, could, we could end there, but there is a problem. The problem is that the gradient decreases uh, exponentially in the number of qubits, and if we want to encode, if we want to disentangle a state that are 10, 15, or 20 qubits uh, um, uh, large, then we have a high difficulty because 
uh, the larger the, the system is, the smaller the gradients, the, the, the gradients exponentially vanish. And then we have very, very high, hard time to measure these gradients using conventional methods on quantum computers because we have a large short noise relatively. So after we cross this point of uh, maybe 15 qubits, it, we have no chance. And, and this is known as the barrett plateaus problem. Uh, it, it's a very well-studied re uh, problem recently. It pl plagues uh, all, all variational quantum algorithms, and, and, and a lot of studies are, are, uh, are made how to, how to uh, circumvent it. And for, for us, we had two possible solutions in mind that are applicable to our case, either by, by having some good initialization, good guess of what this circuit, what, what, they, what a good encoder might look like, or that, that will bring us closer to the local, to the, to the global minima, and then we will be able to perceive the gradient, or by using a local cost function, meaning that instead of, of measurement of the global fidelity of, the, of, of our state, we instead try to, uh, to characterize how good our uh, encoder is by, by only by local measurements of, of uh, like, let, for example, Z uh, expectation values of different qubits on the Z uh, power uh, Pauli gate. And using local cost functions, so this is from the famous paper by, by Cerezo, and we were able to, uh, uh, to show that in our case, so, so, so first of all, let's talk about what happens if we initialize with a good, good guess. For example, let's take run solution. So run, run bring us closer to, certainly, clo they're certainly better than a, than a random encoder. And, and we get that we have, we, the gradients are indeed a, a, increase, but still they, they decay exponentially in the number of qubits, although the rate of the exponential decay is, my, is better. Uh, but when we switch to a local cost function, we, we, uh, we've seen that the decay in the gradient becomes polynomial, and then we can, we can, uh, um, we can use this algorithm to, to perform, uh, uh, to, to, to decode, uh, uh, states that are much larger, up to maybe to maybe 50 or 70 qubits, and still be able to to manage to it. It's, okay, so this is this is this ends the the part the main part of my of my talk about quantum state encoding, and then the rest of the, my time how how many how much eight minutes, eight minutes? Five, five. okay five minutes perfect so. Uh, I'll talk about how we thought of generalizing the, this, this algorithm of element-wise optimization, uh, even the Vidal-like optimization, to, uh, to, uh, to optimize a general, a general quantum circuits. For example, if we, we, want, we, have a, we want to do a VQE algorithm to find a ground state of, a Milton, of, of certain Hamiltonian, then the, the a conventional approach is to uh, to, to pick an ansatz that have sparse parametrization and to do some, 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 some kind of stochastic that gradient descent over the different parameters. So either you, you do some gradient descent using param the parameter shift rule, you somehow, somehow measure uh, to some accuracy your gradients and try to uh, go in the direction of the, of the gradient and hopefully you, will, you won't get stuck somewhere. And, and and, or, or either some, some, some studies prefer to do gradation free, a, a, a gradient free optimization because gradients are very, very, like it's very tough to, to, to characterize accurately the whole gradient. So sometimes, it's, sometimes it may be even better to just forget about gradient and just use some um, black box optimization like, like, like Kobayla. This is, this is at, le at least the, the, this is, may not be the best, but sometimes it's the, uh, the, the one who, who get you less in trouble. So, okay. what, what we suggest is an alternative method uh, in which instead of doing a, a, gradient, a, a gradient descent over all the parameters at once, we uh, assume that um, a, some, some structure to our a circuit that, is, that looks like a tensor network. And we try to, as, as, as before, we try to, to optimize one gate at a time by characterizing or doing some kind of tomography to the environment tensor as before. So in this case, the environment, okay, so this is, this is exactly, so for first step, 
characterize, characterize the dependency of the cost function on only a single, <laughs> single two qubit gate. So this will be uh, characterizing the environment. And so the second step is to, when, what, if, if we obtain the whole environment tensor uh, in our hand, we can find analytically to solve, we can, um, in a classical computer, we can solve and find the optimal unitary that we have to replace. And then we go, okay, and then we go over and over again. Um, um, okay, so, so here, in, uh, five minutes. So here, uh, after, uh, so after we do that, for example, if we want to do it for a VQE, then we can, we can look at the expectation value of the, of the Hamiltonian like that, like a tensor network uh, like that. And if we look at the, 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 the energy as a function of only one unitary gate, we have that the, the environment tensor look like uh, this kind of tensor that, the, basically the second derivative of the cost function uh, according to a unitary gate. But this, this uh, cost function, this, this tensor is very, uh, a little bit tricky to measure. Um, uh, mainly because we are limited in the way we can probe this, uh, this, uh, uh, this tensor because we cannot put in any tensors that we, like, that we would like to. We would like to put here x and here, and here z and to measure all the different, like you can see like in this one u will be x and y, one u will be replaced by z, but, but of course we cannot do that. We have to uh, substitute uh, symmetrically on, or using only unitary gates. And, and then uh, when, when to these two restrictions are, are, um, um, are applied, uh, we can we have developed or we have found some some uh, some methods to some efficient methods to to do a tomo full tomography for this tensor. Some of them are really really uh, um, another version of, of already already known uh, versions of, of uh, choosing some har 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 random unitaries and to trying to do a kind of shadow tomography um, uh, some shadow tomography to this environment tensor. Or, or by, by picking some unitary design, we can do it with, uh, with uh, hopefully a tight unitary design. We can do it with only a, a, a finite number of, of circuits. And then we can also, if we, like, we would like to, to pick uh, gates that are friendly, uh, if, uh, friendly to, to implement, we can, we, can also, uh, we, we can also use a more gener general uh, um, general method for, for uh, tomography of the environment tensor using linear regression. Um, I, I haven't uh, given here all the details, but, but the, the, uh, hopefully, hopefully we will upload our paper to the archive uh, quite soon, and, and uh, I'll be happy to discuss it uh, later. And, and some, some preliminary results. So you can see we have some comparisons between different methods of how well we, we how well we uh, we characterize the environment tensor. This is all. These are all on, simula on, on uh, simulation, classical simulation of, of quantum circuits, and you can see you can see that it, the, it goes as a square root of the number of shots, of course. And then we can uh, we can also plot how well we found the optimal, like how 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 accurately we we, we found the optimal replacement of the gate by having by having the and by, by characterizing the environment tensor, so th this goes down linearly actually. And putting all of this together, we can, uh, we can do a full optimization of some uh, VQE, this, in this case for the, uh, for the Ising, uh, uh, Ising, ground truth of the Ising Hamiltonian. So we still have a lot, we have to put in a lot of, lot of different plots for, for, the par for, for gradient descent using the parameter shift rule, but we can see that we are in the ballpark, we are in the, we, we, we are, uh, um, doing quite well compared to the other algorithms, and of course this is a very naive implementation. Yet we can still uh, work on more, or more sophisticated way to uh, minimize number of shots that requires a full optimization of the VQE. So, uh, um, so with that, I've, I've finished. I'd be glad to take any questions. Thank you.